This is the Holland Assets Podcast, where we'll show you how to go from employee truck driver to savvy business owner. And we'll do it together because we're starting our own trucking company, Holland Assets. So you'll get a front row seat through the whole process. Together with some experts in the field, we'll teach you how to set up a business, buy a truck, get your DOT and MC numbers, get insurance, and a lot more. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, everybody, to episode 20 of the Holland Assets Podcast. I am Craig, your host, and on the road today, Chris, how's it going out there? Uh, it's going really well. Good. Well, I, I want to hear how it's going out there, but first, Chris, let's talk about what we are going to get to today. What is today's topic? Uh, today's a cool topic because it's something that's uh, really important that uh, a lot of times guys kind of neglect a little bit. But it is critical to being as successful as you can in a trucking company. That's understanding your cost per mile. Okay, yeah, this is something you've talked about on previous episodes. And I feel like I've it's kind of a self explanatory term, it seems like, but I'm betting because we're doing a whole episode on it that there's more to the story than just those three words, cost per mile, right? It's it's there's gonna be some calculation and stuff in here. So it cost per miles, there's there's a lot of calculation that goes into it. It's an important thing to do. Um, but to kind of help make it a little bit easier, we've actually developed a cost per mile calculator that's on the Motor Carrier HQ website. If you go right onto that website under the tools section, you'll you'll see where it's at. You can go in there and based off the knowledge that hopefully you gain in this episode, you can go around and play around on that calculator and use it to develop your own cost per mile and uh, make you make you a little bit better, um, give you a little better understanding into your business. Excellent. Uh, okay. Well, now I've got to ask you, Chris, before we get to all that stuff, how's life on the road? I mean, I, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm, it's kind of interesting. The load, the, I find the load that I'm on kind of ironic. Um, I picked up a load of cheese in Idaho and guess where I'm taking it? Uh, Idaho? No, uh, Wisconsin. Okay. I, I, um, I don't see the irony yet. Well, Wisconsin's like the state oh, in the country geez. that is known for cheese. Uh, yeah, so I heard you say keys. I was like, that oh. must be a heavy load. <laughs> <laughs> no, cheese. Yeah, so I'm taking cheese from Idaho to Wisconsin, and I, uh, that kind of made me laugh. This is the problem with us not being in studio together. I, I can't hear all of your consonants <laughs> correctly, Chris. It ruined the joke. I need to enunciate a little bit better. <laughs> uh, what kind of cheese? Well, it's actually kind of a raw cheese, and I think they finish um, packaging it, nattering all the flavors, or doing you know can further process it once it hits Wisconsin, and then they probably just turn around and market it as Wisconsin cheese, right, and send it back to Idaho. <laughs> probably. <yeah. laughs> all right, very good. Well, um, anything else you want to talk about from the road, or should we dive into our topic today? Um, I, I drove through a lake today. That was kind of fun. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you, you drove through a lake? Yeah, there's a there's this uh, quite a bit of flooding. There's like no rain. I don't know if it rained previously or what, but there's a lot of flooding in South Dakota right now. I was driving through South Dakota on I-90, so on the interstate. Like They had it slowed down to five miles an hour at one point. Luckily, there wasn't a bunch of traffic, but you know, slowed way, way down and, and literally like six inches to a foot of water just going across the freeway and uh, you had to drive right through it. Wow. So, uh, Chris, I got to ask you, you've been in the National Guard now. We talked about this in a previous episode. You've been in the National Guard for years now, decades, right? Cause, uh, decades, yeah. Yeah, decades. How, how does that feel? No, but you've been in the National Guard for like 20 years and you've been driving a truck for three months which one has given you more stories at this point? Uh, let's be honest. <laughs> Probably the. Th it's a little more than three months of trucking, but yeah, I, the trucking's given me a lot of story. That's funny when you put it that way. It's uh, it's incredible. It's just every time I talk to you, you've always got something else that interesting that happened on the road. It's uh, it's it seems like a lot of fun in that way at L least. Life is never dull on the road. <laughs> All right. Well. Let's get started on today's topic, Chris. And before we do, I'll just remind everybody, you already mentioned MotorCarrierHQ.com, where you can go to the tools section and check out some of the stuff that we're talking about today. You can also go to HollandAssetsLLC.com if you want full show notes, 
I just want to make sure that everybody remembers that. And today is going to be uh, one of those episodes where it's a good idea to follow along. So MotorCarrierHQ.com in that tools section, uh, you can look for the uh, for the calculator that we're going to be talking about today for uh, cost per mile. And you're going to be explaining more about how that works. But maybe let's start from the top, Chris, uh, and maybe just get into how, how are we defining cost per mile? Um, good question. So really what I want to do today is kind of go through three different scenarios because the, the cost per mile, it, it uses calculations. It uses numbers. Some people are more comfortable with numbers than other people are. So I want to go through kind of a good, better, best scenario. Um, I, and and each one of those kind of gets a little bit more complicated, but gives you better info and, and helps you better understand your business operations. So, you know, the, the good method is going to be pretty simple, not too many numbers, not too many calculations, and better, a little bit more complicated, but gives you a little more insight into your business. And then the best is, is gets, you know, a bit more complicated than that, but again, gives you more tools and more understanding to make even better business decisions. Okay. And I mean, yeah, that's kind of what this podcast is all about. So I suppose this episode fits right in. Yeah, absolutely. Now with so, cost per mile, uh, this is something now I, I'm cheating a little bit, Chris. I'm looking ahead at um, at the spreadsheet that you've used to create the calculator that people can go look at. Um, and we're looking at... Uh, three months worth of data on this is that about what you would suggest when people are doing their calculations they should be looking at a three-month timeline or or uh, is there some other method they would be using ideally you know that's a great question the the more data you have typically the better and more accurate number you're going to come up with so if you look at it and say hey i'm going to start calculating my cost per mile after one month well in, in one month you're not going to get all the expenses that happen over a period of time in, and, and, and your number is just really not going to be accurate. So I kind of felt like, yeah, that three-month period is when you really get your best information and, and you can kind of really start honing in on a fairly accurate cost per mile. So we're going to go over my, my three-month numbers from May, June, and July, and that's what I'm using to calculate my cost per mile. But then we'll probably do this again at six months and then we'll do it again at 12 months. And 12 months is really when you're going to get that most accurate information, that most accurate cost per mile, because that's when you're going to have a full year's worth of expenses. So pretty much all, a lot of some of the expenses that you have in a trucking company are something you pay just once a year. And, and sometimes you'll miss that if you're doing a three, six month calculation um, I've I've tried to kind of compensate for that a little bit, but I, I'll still probably miss something. So the three month will be accurate, six months even more accurate, but your most accurate number is going to be that twelve month uh, cost per mile calculation. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. So now, um, how about that definition of cost per mile? Do we want to get into what this actually means? Yeah, for sure. So your your cost per mile, and the best way to kind of answer that question is really to talk about the calculation itself and, and get into, you know, how do you calculate that cost per mile? So it, it's basically one um, calculation. So for example, um, you, you're going to take the, the total amount of money you've spent in your expense and divide that by the total number of miles that you've driven. So if you take, for example, um, in in those three months, I drove a total of 31,307 miles. So a little bit over 10,000 miles a month. Um, and then all you need to do for those three months is add up, for example, the total amount of fuel that you purchased in those three months and divide it by that number of miles. And that'll give you your cost per mile for fuel. Okay. Well, yeah, simple enough. I mean, so... The question now in my mind is, why are we devoting an entire episode to this? Because it sounds super simple, but <laughs> like I said at, at the top, I'm sure there's more to it. So break it down for me even further. Now that we've got the high level, how does it actually work? Yeah, good good, good question. So if you take a look at that P&L statement that I talked about in a couple episodes ago, you'll look kind of near the very bottom of it. It will show total expenses. And if you just, on the very right-hand side of the page, almost near the bottom, you'll see $52,440. And 
If you divide that number by the 31,307 miles that I drove, it'll give you a rough estimate of what your cost per mile is. And, and you'll see this is kind of, it, that calculation comes out to about $1.67 a mile. And that's not exactly what I've calculated for my cost per mile. We'll get into a little bit, but it gets you close. And so knowing that number is better than nothing, but it's not going to give you the, your most accurate number. Okay. Yeah. But if somebody wanted to get started and they have a, a P&L statement, they can just just grab that for a preliminary number and then dig a little bit more into it with the info they're going to get here today. Yeah. And, and so that's knowing that you're going to be better than than 80 percent of the people out there, because 80 percent of the, the owner operators out there don't have a clue what their cost per mile is. If you even just know that number, you're you're miles ahead of most. Right. OK. All right. Well, let's talk then about how you actually calculate uh, your more accurate cost per mile, uh, because there's another it, it's not the profit and loss statement. You've got uh, another tool out there, that's what you're talking about, is this tool over on MotorCarrierHQ.com uh, for this specific purpose. So how how is it different? How are you tracking your expenses differently there? So that rate calculator that's on the MotorCarrierHQ.com website, it goes, it it takes each expense item and divides that and and calculates a cost per mile calculation. So the, all the calculation, everything kind of happens in the back end. So you just kind of really need to plug in some numbers and, and it'll give you what your cost per mile is. But it's the important thing in this aspect, and this is where the better, the better system comes in, is you are able to understand what your cost per mile is, not just the total cost per mile, but each individual cost per mile. So you know what your driver expense is per mile. You know what your fuel expense is per mile, what your truck payment is. Um, ca how that calculates into your um, cost per mile. Uh, it, it just it, it dives into that granular detail so that you can see what each one of those items is. And, and, and a, a little bit later on in the podcast, I'll kind of break that down and, and help help us better under see, help us better under, understand why that's important and how you can use that to make better business decisions. All right. Well, very good. Well, where where do you want to go with this next then? Because that was going to be my next question is let's dig into the actual numbers. And and we can do that. I I think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of walk through some of those. So and I'll put this in the MotorCarrierHQ.com calculator page. I'll, I'll I haven't really gone in and, and added a ton of the detail that we're talking about right now, but I will here in the next few days. So if if it if it's not there right at the day that the podcast episode launches, it'll be there a few days later, and you'll be able to see kind of some of the stuff that I'm talking through. So you, you, you take, for example, um, the cost per mile um, for the drivers, $0.44, cents, fuels, $0.53, cents, um, insurance is about $0.16, cents, and, it, and it just kind of goes in through there. It, it, each one's... Well, hang on, because you're lumping insurance in with driver and fuel. Now, the first two make sense to me. A driver, you know, you need to pay a driver a certain amount. Even if it's yourself, you need to pay them a certain amount per mile. Fuel, you're using a, a certain amount of fuel per mile, et cetera, et cetera. But then insurance, you're working that in there. Why, why is that in the same uh, document as the other two? How does that work? That's a good question. That's kind of where we come, you know, kind of helps us transition a little bit into the 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 best method. And and the best method is going to take into account what are called fixed costs versus variable costs. This is this is really the best way to understand your cost per mile is to be able to break them into those situations. So, a fixed cost is a cost that whether you run 1 mile or 10,000 miles a month, you're paying that fixed cost no matter what. So insurance, like you were just talking about, that's it's different than than fuel because you're going to pay that amount in the month whether you drive a, a ton of miles or not. It's a fixed cost. Gotcha. Okay. So the so the yearly cost is fixed. It's the mileage that changes. And so yeah, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around this. So you're talking about 16 cents a mile for insurance, but uh, that's but that's based on a fixed cost versus something like fuel, which may be a, a variable cost, depending on how much you drive, depending on how much fuel costs, it's going to shift, you know, day to day, month to month, um, that that cost per mile, right? And so that's where you're getting that average over a longer period of time, three months, six months, 12 months. Am I on the right track here? 
Yeah, that, that, that's a good way to look at it. The, the variable expense is just, it's one of those expenses that the, and fuels this way, obviously, driver pays this way, obviously. The more miles you put on, the more you're going to pay in it. The fewer miles, the less you're going to pay. So the, the variable, it's variable based on the number of miles that you drive. Fixed costs are, are still going to fluctuate a little bit based on how many miles you drive in a month, but that fixed payment doesn't change at all. So, and and again, kind of more towards the uh, end of the podcast, when we kind of wrap this all together, I'll, I'll give a little bit be- better explanation of why is it important to understand that difference between the fixed cost and the variable cost. Okay. Well, for now, maybe are there any other categories that you feel are really important to highlight when we're talking about expenses? No, just understanding those fixed costs and the variable costs. Okay. And, and rather than kind of go into each one of those expenses one by one and bore everybody to death, <laughs> go onto the website. You, I'll have that. If, it, if it's not in the next day or two, I'll have it up in the next day or two. It might not be there the day that this episode launches, but I'll, I'll get it up there pretty quick. And you can, you'll be able to see the difference, the different variable expenses, fixed expenses, and exactly what they are. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, they can go check out the the specifics there, but Chris, maybe we should spoil it and actually talk about what your numbers turned out to be. You already mentioned it, um, that if you just use the P&L, it came out to what, buck 67 a mile, uh, but you're saying that wasn't quite accurate. So did you get a different number for your, you, this, this calculator for expense per mile? I did. And so let me, let me just really briefly explain really quick some of the differences. Part of the reason is is because you're why there's that that difference between the uh just taking that net in that net expense and dividing it by the uh number of miles off of the P and L. It's because your P and L doesn't take into account your full truck payment or trailer payment and, and there's a few other items in there like lumper fees. I didn't I didn't really put those in because those get reimbursed by the broker that you're hauling the, the product for. So they, they don't really I don't treat those as true expenses. And that's and that's part of the reason that number is going to be a little bit different. But yeah, so um that was a dollar sixty seven, but my total cost per mile uh was a dollar sixty four. Uh okay. All right. Well that doesn't sound that different to me. Although I guess I should say when you're driving 31,000 miles, you know, that that three cent difference uh, adds up, I suppose, right? It does. Yep. And and the other thing that's uh, that's kind of interesting is my my variable cost per mile was $1.33 a mile and my fixed expense cost per mile was 31 cents a mile. Okay, so this sounds like uh, a lot of good information, obviously, but maybe we need to wrap it up into a bow so that I can <laughs> remember what it is that we talked about for the last few minutes and so that other people can as well. Uh, so wrap this up for me, Chris. Tell me exactly what I need to know. Give me your elevator pitch for cost per mile. All right, good. So there's there's basically three things that I think people can really use that cost per mile to help them be more successful in their business. So the first one is, you know, rather than just picking up a load on a wing and a prayer and hoping that you're going to make money on it, using that (laughs) cost per, (laughs) using that cost per mile calculation is going to really help you determine whether it is a load that you should take or or it isn't. Well, that actually brings up a question, if you don't mind me interjecting, Chris, um, because you're, you're talking about the different types of loads is you, you've, been driving a reefer unit for a few months now. Uh, you've talked about in an earlier earlier episode the different types of trailers you might be hauling. Um, would the would the cost per mile be similar based on the different type of uh, loads you're hauling? So if somebody else is uh, using a reefer to haul, could could they expect to see a similar number to what you're seeing on cost per mile and use that to gauge what they should be getting? Yeah, that's actually a a really good point. Um, they should, and and so you know, especially somebody that's really just trying to get into the business right now, or trying to decide, hey, do I want to get into trucking? Can I make money at this? They'll be able to use the numbers that uh, that I'm putting out here to kind of use that as a baseline to help them make that determination. So you take, for example. Um, I've listed out all my costs per mile on everything, what my expenses are, roughly how many miles I'm driving a month. And somebody else can go to their, you know, as they're getting insurance bids, take that insurance bid and say, okay, hey, this is how much insurance is going to cost me over a three month period. My number's a little bit different than Chris's. And they can 
um, figure out what their cost per mile and in insurance is going to be and how is it different from mine. And they can help to use that as a tool to determine, okay, it's going to cost me a little bit more, but it's still within the realms that I can make money in this market based off of the revenue that I'm seeing on load boards right now. So that's really one of the good ways that somebody can use this cost per mile calculation to help them decide if they even want to get into the business or not. Right. That makes sense to me. Any other points that you wanted to bring up on why this is a good idea or how to do it correctly? Yeah. So the, the third thing with the cost per mile, that can how it can really be beneficial is just understanding if you're operating your business efficiently. Um, so you, you take, for example, it can help you determine if you're paying too much in a certain area. Um, if, if you're seeing that I'm spending roughly 53 cents a mile in fuel and you're spending 60 cents a mile in fuel, you may want to look and say, hey, am I purchasing my fuel at the best places? Is the fuel card that I'm using giving me the best discounts that I can possibly get? Or another way that it can be used is for maintenance and repairs. If your cost and maintenance and repairs is way higher than mine, you can say, well, maybe the shop that I'm taking my truck to is overcharging me, or maybe you'll just able to determine that, hey, this truck that I'm using right now is, is costing me so much in repairs because it's so old, it's time to, to get a new truck. Gotcha. Yeah, that actually, uh, I like that. That kind of makes it real to me, I guess. If, you know, if you know me, uh, numbers terrify me, right? <laughs> but but numbers with a purpose, numbers that are going to help me, you know, uh, have a better business, have a better business outcome, I should say. Uh, that's a good idea. So I like this, Chris. So one more thing that I forgot, um, talking a little bit about that fixed expense and the variable expense. So the first point that I said where you can kind of really use this cost per mile calculator in determining um, whether a load is a good load or not, that fixed cost and that variable cost can kind of come into play here. So you, you take, for example, this happens all the time. You take a, a really good paying load from somewhere that takes you into a place like Florida. And Florida is notorious for... Um, you, you get a really good rate going in, you get paid really well going in, but then when you get stuck in Florida because there's a lot more trucks there than freight. And so a lot of the times the, the, uh, the, the, the rate that you get coming out is going to be bad. Well, that's where the cost per mile can come in and, and really help you determine things. So if you, if you remember, my cost per mile is $1.64. My variable cost is... A dollar thirty-three, and my fixed cost is is thirty-one cents a mile. So, what happens is, is you get down into Florida and you get caught, and and you you find this load, and let's say it's paying a dollar fifty. Well, a dollar fifty doesn't cover all my cost per mile, but it's not necessarily a a terrible thing or the end of the world when that happens because the important thing is is it's covering my variable cost per mile so that dollar 33 it's covering all of that and then it's covering another 17 cents of my total 31 cents cost per mile so it's covering part of my fixed cost so if you have to do that once or twice a month um it's okay, especially if you know that, hey, I, I took a load coming into Florida that was paying me two twenty five a mile, um, so it more than made up for that. I'm covering all of my fi or variable costs and part of my fixed costs. It's not the end of the world. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, although you could have stopped right after you said Florida is notorious. <laughs> Florida is notorious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that feels it feels like I've got a lot of info here and that that's a good stopping point. How are we feeling, Chris? Do we want to wrap this up? Yeah, I think it's uh I think we've hit it all. All right. Well, very good. So, uh, once again, I'll remind people to after you've heard this episode, if you haven't been following along with the calculator that we provide at motorcarrierhq.com, you can go do that. Check that out. Check out the full show notes at hollandassetsllc.com and don't forget to find us on Facebook as well where we do a lot of fun stuff, contests and giveaways and photos and all, you know, all this stuff. Chris, your Facebook page is pretty great. <laughs> it's, you know, it's getting better and better. Yeah, we're, we're starting to, uh, I'm, I'm actually posting things and trying to be social. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, we'll keep working on that, I guess. <laughs> I, I need some help. All right, well, very good. Chris, I'll see you for episode 21. See you then. I am 
pretty stuffy today, but we'll we'll work with it. Uh, I think you sound great. Oh, thanks, man. S- silky, Sil- silky, silky smooth. That's right. Yeah, yeah. silky smooth.